JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for May the 17th. I am Harala Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD. And I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded lower against all but one of the other major currencies on Monday during the Asian session Tuesday. It gained only versus the yen, while it lost the most ground uh, versus the Aussie, the Kiwi and the Canadian dollar. Now, the weakening of the US dollar in the safe haven yen, combined with the strengthening of the commodity linked Aussie, Kiwi and Looney, suggests that market appetite improved at some point uh, yesterday or, or today in Asia. And indeed, looking at the performance uh, of the equity world, we see that all but two of the European indices under our, radar, uh, under our radar have traded in the red, with Wall Street following suit. But indeed, sentiment improved during the Asian session today, with Hong Kong's Hang Seng surging 3.20%. Uh, now, in our view, European and US shares may have traded largely south because of the disappointing Chinese data released during the Asian session yesterday. Remember that on Friday we saw these advances, but uh, we argued that this was due to short covering and portfolio rebalancing at the last trading day of the week. The fundamentals of uh, the broader financial landscape have not uh, changed and uh, uh, with, uh, with the market drivers still being uh, concerns over global growth, expectations over fast uh, tightening by some major central banks, and uh, the uncertainty surrounding the war in Ukraine. Now, the Chinese data enhanced the former, meaning the global growth concerns, and that's why we saw appetite subdued yesterday in Europe and US. Yes, but what about the improvement today in Asia? To be honest, we cannot sufficiently explain that and thus with no obvious catalyst we will treat the recovery as a corrective move. We still believe that the broader, uh, well let's say there is uh, room for another leg south in equities. Now back to the FX world, the Aussie was the main gainer and this may have been due to the RBA minutes being more hoggish than anticipated. Remember that, that at uh, the last gathering, the bank hiked by 25 basis points, surprising most market participants who have been uh, expecting a 15 basis points liftoff, and also noted that it remains uh, willing to proceed with more increments if, uh, in order to bring inflation back to target. That said, the minutes revealed that the bank included in its options a 14 basis uh, points hike, which supports the narrative that it may, uh, that officials may continue hiking at a, at a faster pace. Remember that market expectations have been over like hawkish for some time now with regards to the RBA, but the bank had yet to confirm those expectations. Now it is providing more and more evidence that this might be the case and that's why we saw the Aussie trading higher. However, we are, very, we are still very reluctant to call for a bullish reversal in the Aussie as global growth concerns weigh against uh, that risk-linked currency. Remember that Australia is a main trading partner of China, the world's second largest economy, and supply chain concerns related to China may well hurt the Australian dollar. If it was only monetary policy, we would expect Aussie yen to continue trading north, a more hoggish than expected RBA combined with an ultra, with an ultra dovish uh, bank of Japan is theoretically a recipe for just that. Nonetheless, the global landscape is a bit uh, pecu peculiar. Central banks are not raising interest rates because economies are doing very well and 
that uh, alongside inflation is rising. It's because inflation is very high at a time when there are signs of economic slowdown and concerns over a global recession. This is called stag stagflation. So, with um, with such concerns now being on the front page of investors' agenda, we do see the case for us again to turn uh, south again. Now, as for today, during the early European session, we already got the UK employment report for March. The unemployment rate slid to 3.7% against uh, expectations of 3.8%, while the employment change revealed that the economy has added much more than expected jobs. Average earnings also beat expectations. This may be a relief uh, for those concerned over a recession in the UK, and that's why we saw the pound trading higher. Accelerating inflation tomorrow, early morning, could revive expectations over uh, somewhat faster tightening path by the Bank of England and may allow for some further advances. However, uh, the signs that the UK economy is not performing that well overweigh the positive ones. And after all, the employment report is for March. We prefer to focus on data concerning more recent periods. We believe that it is too early to call for a reversal in the pound, especially against the US dollar. We believe that the recession concerns are still there at a time when the Fed is expected to continue delivering 50, 50 basis points liftoffs for the next couple of uh, months. We will get to hear from Fed Chair Powell later today and we expect him to confirm that uh, narrative. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT just fair and direct.